And this generation, this 9-11 generation of service members, they too felt something. They answered some call. They said, I will go. And for more than a decade, they have endured tour after tour. Sergeant First Class Corey Remsburg has served 10. And I've told Corey's incredible story before, most recently when he sat with my wife Michelle at the State of the Union address. It was here at Omaha Beach on the 65th anniversary of D-Day, where I first met Corey and his fellow Army Rangers. Still see everything and be like 65 years ago, these guys were in an all out battle right here where I stand. So it's kind of amazing. It's insane. A little bit, a little bit overwhelming. You, you see this in movies. I mean, you see the, the longest day saving Private Ryan, but until you actually walk here, it's, you can't truly appreciate what happened. Elite Army Rangers on the windy cliffs of Normandy, 2009. This is kind of like our, our mecca and all you're hearing about, you know, through all the Ranger history is point to hawk, point to hawk. This is the human side you rarely see of battle-hardened Rangers. This is also a D-Day anniversary story unlike any you've ever seen. As an embedded reporter who's covered Rangers and their fellow special operators in war zones and other locations, they invited me along for a different kind of mission, exploring Normandy on the 65th anniversary to discover their history. And as Ranger Fogel says, the meaning of D-Day. The impossible mission, because it's kept trying to salt the cliffs, kept trying to salt the cliffs. Everyone was getting wiped out. And down on the beach, they're like, we have to take those, we have to get those cliffs. And that's where the phrase, Rangers lead the way come from. I turned around and he was like, Rangers lead the way. And, uh, and second and fifth came up. It took a lot of losses, but they, they got it done. Ranger Corey Remsburg, second from the right, acknowledges this moment in time. The overall bigger picture is something incredible, like liberating another country. Like I said, you can't replicate that feeling. So, I mean, it was so cool to come out here and this is legitimately a once in a lifetime opportunity to come out, especially with some of these old vets that are out here. This will be second Ranger Time guy who's killed the points to Hawk. Ranger Wheeler scoops sand into a Ziploc baggie to carry with him always as a reminder. Ranger Lambert and Brunsma honored their Ranger forefathers in their own way at sunrise along the cliffs. Run uh, up, up Omaha Beach uh -huh. uh, the other day and uh, no equipment, just uh, doing some PT. We were smoked by the time we got to the top. We got top to the top. Of it. Yeah, we were like, damn. So, uh, so when I can you only think imagine of what they were going through. So, so these, so here it's even worse. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta get your grappling hook up up there onto something and then pull yourself up while the enemy is shooting down. Scale a hundred foot wall, get shot at the whole time, and then come up here and kick their ass anyhow. That's an official term. Well, yeah. Yes. Yep. As soon as you're there and your buddies were going down or wherever else, there's no time to really think. It's just all the training and everything uh, else. A lot of like what to... gets it done is, uh, you know, the guys to your left and right. It's like it's like a bunch okay. of little brothers, you know. You don't always get along, but it's second, you know, any of us is in trouble, we all come to back each other up. Ranger Strucker knows this firsthand. When people ask me what a ranger is, it's hard to define what a ranger is except by telling them what a ranger does. And a ranger is a man who, no matter what the obstacle is, will not fail to accomplish his mission. And that really was born here at these cliffs. Ranger Strucker led a convoy under fire in Somalia during the so-called Black Hawk Down mission. An actor played him in the movie. How's things going? Things okay there, Strucker? I don't want to talk about it now, Colonel! Ranger Strucker faced huge obstacles back then, but refused to fail to accomplish his mission. And I think most Rangers today that are alive would tell you it is because of what these guys did today that they feel a, an obligation to live up to this history. Then the Rangers in their tan berets joined their special operations brothers, the Green Berets, Navy SEALs, and Air Force Special Operations Combat Controllers in the Red Berets for a private ceremony where the first families of Normandy honored them. Ranger Strucker, now a chaplain, gave the prayer. Mighty God in heaven, thank you for creating men who 65 years ago got off of those ships, stormed the beaches, and then looked up at those hundred and 
foot cliffs and would not let any obstacle stand in their way. The veteran in the hat is one of those men, one of two of the original rangers attending who scaled the cliffs. The other ranger veteran and First Lady Michelle Obama was escorted by Ranger Wheeler at the official D-Day ceremony with heads of state. At dawn on June 6th. The and the young rangers in their tan berets were on stage for the president's speech. On the cliffs, while airborne divisions parachuted behind enemy lines. But all did not go according to plan. Paratroopers landed miles from their mark. Soon the paratroopers found each other and fought their way back. The rangers scaled the cliffs. And by the end of the day, against all odds, the ground on which we stand was free once more. It's a story written by men like Anthony Ruggiero, an army ranger who saw half the men on his landing craft drown when it was hit by shell fire just a thousand yards off this beach. He spent three hours in freezing water was one of only 90 rangers to survive out of the 225 who were sent to scale the cliffs. From our vantage point, that side corner there, Ranger Klinger watched the ranger veteran in the hat on stage with the president. What's this like? Uh, it's pretty awe-inspiring. Uh, I've never been in this, any, part of anything this big before, so that and uh, on top of the fact that, I mean, it's not often you hear the president or anybody else mention rangers, so, you know, we're kind of trying to be the, the, the quiet, the quiet few. Yeah, you're always so, the quiet professional types, we right? We try to be, we try to be, but uh, at least in public places, and, uh, and to, to get mentioned, it was pretty cool. Ranger Wheeler, who escorted Mrs. Obama, and Ranger Ferguson met actor Tom Hanks backstage. The Oscar winner played a ranger in the movie Saving Private Ryan. That way when you throw it, it should stick. It's a bomb that sticks, it's a sticky bomb. Come up with a better way to knock the tracks off a tank, I'm all ears. Said, uh, Tom, rangers lead the way. He's like, what's that? I was like, rangers lead the way, Tom. He's like, roger that, rangers lead the way. <laughs> moved on out. Tom Hanks, Tom as Hanks. in like, you know, Saving Tom Private Hanks. Ryan. You'd think that he'd know that rangers lead the way. Oh, he knows the rangers lead the way. Uh-huh. For sure. <laughs> yeah. I affectionately call him Thomas. Thomas, OK. Thomas. Just so we're all strange. <laughs> Only when we're texting now. Only, you know? oh, in, a, in the texting sort of situation, huh? Here, it's the rangers who are treated like movie stars, French children clamoring for their autographs. Second time since you've been here. I think it's the same kid, actually. Yeah? But he got two scrolls out of the deal. What does it feel like? Who want your autograph? Yeah. No, 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 don't get that in the States. He said, thanks. Oh, Thank wow. You. Then, a mass parachute jump to honor the D-Day paratroopers, like this veteran who was on stage earlier. The weather turns rough, as it often does in Normandy. But the band played on as paratroopers, airborne rangers, and other special operators get blown off course just as their forefathers did. Oh, right in the water. Did you see that? Yep. But at least today's soldiers, Ranger Ferguson says, were not under fire. That was the worst landing I've ever had in my career, <laughs> ever. That landing was it could have been worse 65 years ago, yeah. though, right? It could have been a whole lot worse than still working, so I guess it's not that bad. Rough enough to activate some of their big orange life preservers. Ranger Scarifal landed in the water. Standard. So how was that water? Uh, it was freezing. Freezing. Yes. So did it make it a softer landing? Uh, no, because I hit and then got drug in the water. So it was a little bit of both. Yeah. You know, try to hit all aspects of the jump. What was going through your head? Is it like the whole history thing? I mean, I was just trying to picture what it would be like. You know, if I was one of those men at the time. Just trying to reenact it in my head. You know, just to kind of get a feel for it. Pretty overwhelming. Uh, pretty scary. And Ranger Wheeler got hurt. Actually, it's a jump to Normandy, but the bad part was that I uh, hit the ground and hit my head, saw some lights, and then the, uh, a father and a daughter was sitting there looking at me, waiting on me to get up. And they asked me, like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, just let me lay here a minute. <laughs> was it in French? Uh, no, they said in uh, English. Really? Yep. How are you doing? Are you okay? Oh, yeah, I'm fine now. Ranger Corey Remsburg put this entire windy jump into perspective. How was, how was it out there? Good jump. Yeah. Um, really cool thing. Like 
hanging out, looking around, seeing the same thing that these old dudes saw about 65 years ago. Was that what was going through your head as far well, as? I didn't have any combat equipment on or anything. I wasn't getting shot at. I mean, Normandy's gorgeous. It's cool. But just to think of the, the other side of it, you know, like, you're going to come down, you're going to take off your stuff, you're going to liberate a country. Pretty intense. As everyone packs up, Ranger Boonsma and Lambert tell me about their surprise VIP meeting earlier. This is a presidential coin from uh, President Barack Obama. So explain how you received this coin. And he looked over and saw us. He's like, let me go talk to these guys first. And then he came and spoke with us, took a couple pictures. President Obama did? Yeah. And what did he say to you? Um, pretty much told us we kick ass. Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> did he say Rangers lead the way? Yeah, he said you know, he loves us. And uh, that he, he took a picture with us, and we told him not to smile too much. And uh, he's like, oh, yeah, that's because Rangers don't smile, huh? And so, But it was pretty cool. you know. Got I was standing right next to him. He was right next to him, too. And uh, met Michelle Obama, too. And she came, took pictures with us. Real nice lady. Um, Mrs. President. There we go. Mrs. President. <laughs> <laughs> that's when Ranger Stricker volunteered his men on the spot to escort the VIPs. And that's how the Rangers ended up leading the way on the world stage. So we're escorting some, uh, some veterans to uh, the stage. They don't get around, they're about 85 or so. There's a ranger there who scaled uh, Point Du Hoc, uh, survivor. Um, he was the last so person to scale Point Du Hoc, the last ranger to go up it. So the guys pretty much, I mean, that was a really, I mean, meeting the president was awesome, but that was pretty much the highlight of this whole time for me was meeting him and the other, the other two rangers that we got to meet that were here. I mean, there's the rangers from D-Day. Yes. I mean, it was, it was amazing, you know, uh, everything that they've done, you know, they're, they're our inspiration, so that was great. I was like, wow, oh my goodness, so, but yeah, but Mr. President, nice to meet you. <laughs> it was, for me, it was uh, just an honor to be able to, to move those guys around. Each one has an individual story. I didn't even realize I was smiling. I was like, here I am. Rangers aren't supposed to smile. Yeah, so. The elite soldiers kept faces straight on parade in St. Mary Glees. Crowds of French families packed the streets, cheering them on. Many dressed in period costume. The Rangers marched to the town church, where there's a mock-up and a memorial to a paratrooper who was caught on the spire on D-Day. As portrayed in the movie, The Longest Day. In the churchyard, parade rest for another official ceremony. And while Rangers, Green Berets, Navy SEALs, combat controllers, and paratroopers looked on, little French toddlers did exactly what little American toddlers do. They played in the middle of it and gave hope for the future to all. It's important that we tell our stories. It doesn't have to be something big, just a little story about what happened so people don't forget. Ranger Strucker sums up what his men learned on this D-Day mission and what they want Americans to remember about their veterans. To remember that they did that to liberate a country that wasn't our own. And, and now today, you know, without, uh, without getting into the politics of the global war on terrorism, we have men and women who are doing something very similar around the rest of the world. Something I witnessed just a few weeks later, covering many of these same rangers at another location on another mission. I think every ranger would tell you that that, 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 that what happened here 65 years ago is on the back of their mind when they're loading on an aircraft tonight and getting ready to hit a target. And when that target seems overwhelming, they were probably thinking about these men on those cliffs and thinking, I have an obligation to live up to that lineage. There's one word that these cliffs should inspire people about. It's a, a sense of duty, a duty in spite of any obstacle to accomplish the nation's mission. For Ranger Corey Remsburg, this mission that he and his Ranger brothers shared here became their reminder as they headed back to Afghanistan for another tour of duty. Is it kind of something you all do as a tribute to them, to your Ranger fathers that have come before? It is, but it's also good to show our generation so that we'll forget what they do. So, yeah, hey, you know, we appreciate what they did. Like I said, they're probably one of the greatest generations, but it keeps our generation knowing that we're here because of what they did.
So it's, it's pretty cool. And you guys as Rangers are still still out there in the world doing it. Yes, ma'am. Getting it done, huh? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to let you enjoy your French baguette. How is that French baguette? It's plain. It's plain. Yeah, people don't know what the hell mayonnaise is, apparently. It was here at Omaha Beach on the 65th anniversary of D-Day where I first met Corey and his fellow Army Rangers right after they made their own jump into Normandy. And the next time I saw him, he was in the hospital, unable to speak or walk after an ED nearly killed him in Afghanistan. But over the past five years, Corey has grown stronger, learning to speak again and stand again and walk again. And earlier this year, he jumped out of a plane again. And the first words Corey said to me after his accident echoed those words first shouted all those years ago on this beach. Rangers, lead the way. At Point du Hoc, Alex Quaid, Normandy, France.